The following video is intended for mature audiences. It contains horror elements, adult themes, and language that might not be suitable for younger viewers. Few figures loom as large in horror as Freddy Krueger, the dream-stalking boogeyman whose deadly claws cut across the fabric of both sleep and reality. Wes Craven's A Nightmare on Elm Street remains one of the most iconic and beloved horror films of all time, shaping the slasher genre with its terrifyingly original premise and unforgettable antagonist. In 2010, Director Samuel Bayer sought to revive the nightmare for a new generation, reimagining Craven's classic with a fresh yet familiar vision. Both films delve deep into the darkest corners of fear, guilt, and trauma. And while the 1984 and 2010 versions of A Nightmare on Elm Street offer distinct interpretations, they are united by the nightmarish force that is Freddy Krueger. As a fan of both versions, it is fascinating to observe how each film approaches the same story while evoking different psychological and emotional responses. The original, A Nightmare on Elm Street, is an example of surreal horror, grounded in the emotional intensity of its characters and the inescapable terror of dreams. The 2010 remake, while flawed in some respects, offers a darker, grittier exploration of Freddy's mythology, elevating the horror with a more explicit focus on trauma and psychological manipulation. Each film is a product of its time, reflecting not only the evolution of the horror genre, but also the changing fears and anxieties of its audience. The 1984 A Nightmare on Elm Street introduced the world to Freddy Krueger, a child murderer burned alive by vengeful parents who returns to haunt the dreams of their children. Wes Craven's original is more than just a slasher film. It's a psychological exploration of the vulnerabilities that come with sleep where the borders between reality and fantasy blur. In Nightmare, dreams aren't just a place of escape, but a battleground where the stakes are life and death. The brilliance of Craven's original lies in how it weaponizes something as universal and necessary as sleep. Sleep is a place where we are most vulnerable, and in A Nightmare on Elm Street, that vulnerability becomes lethal. Freddy is an invader, not of homes or streets, but of minds embodying an existential terror that cannot be outrun. Unlike most slasher villains, who prey on their victims physically, Freddy attacks the very psyche of his victims. The dream sequences in the 1984 version are masterful examples of surreal horror. Craven blends reality and dream logic seamlessly, disorienting both the characters and the audience. Freddy's domain, the dream world, is a place where the laws of physics and time no longer apply. A school hallway can suddenly become a boiler room, and a peaceful moment of sleep can transform into a nightmare within seconds. How Craven plays with this dream logic is what makes the 1984 film so unsettling. You never know when you're in a dream or reality, and that uncertainty keeps you on edge. But what makes the original A Nightmare on Elm Street truly terrifying is not just the dream sequences or Freddy's grotesque appearance. It's the underlying psychology of the film, the way it taps into deeply buried fears. The teenagers in the film are not just running from a physical threat, but from the sins of their parents. Freddy is more than a slasher villain. He is a manifestation of guilt, repression, and the consequences of unresolved trauma. The fact that the parents in the film attempted to erase their guilt by burning Freddy alive is what gives him power. He becomes the embodiment of revenge and karmic justice, returning to punish not only those responsible for his death, but their children as well. Freddy himself, as portrayed by Robert England, is a sadistic yet strangely charismatic figure. He's not just a faceless killer like Michael Myers or Jason Voorhees. He's a fully realized character, complete with a twisted sense of humor. His taunts delivered in a raspy, menacing voice add an extra layer of psychological torment to his victims. Freddy enjoys the fear he instills, 
and his enjoyment makes the audience's fear more palpable. Unlike other slasher villains, Freddy gets into the heads of his victims before he kills them, making his presence far more insidious and personal. When A Nightmare on Elm Street was remade in 2010, the goal was to reintroduce Freddy Krueger to a new generation while updating the story with modern sensibilities. Directed by Samuel Beyer, the 2010 version aims for a darker, grimmer tone, diving even deeper into Freddy's backstory and the trauma that haunts his victims. While the film was met with mixed reviews, it is nonetheless a fascinating reinterpretation of the original, one that offers a more explicit exploration of the psychological damage Freddy inflicts. One of the most significant changes in the 2010 remake is the depiction of Freddy's backstory. Whereas the 1984 version left much of Freddy's past ambiguous, the 2010 film delves more deeply into his origins, casting Freddy, now played by Jackie Earl Haley, not just as a child murderer, but as a former preschool janitor with a far more sinister history. This new backstory adds a layer of discomfort and horror that was only hinted at in the original, making Freddy an even more reprehensible figure. By exploring Freddy's past, the film raises disturbing questions about memory, repression, and the nature of justice. Jackie Earl Haley's portrayal of Freddy is vastly different from Robert Englund's iconic performance. Haley's Freddy is more menacing and less humorous, trading in the campy one-liners for a darker, more threatening presence. While Englund's Freddy had a playful, almost theatrical quality to him, Haley's version is more grounded and realistic, making him feel more like a predator than a supernatural trickster. This shift in tone is reflective of the overall mood of the remake. It's more serious, more grim, and more focused on the psychological trauma of its characters. The 2010 film also places a heavier emphasis on the theme of trauma and repressed memory. In this version, the teenagers are not just dealing with the threat of Freddy in their dreams, they are also grappling with the resurfacing of forgotten memories. The idea that Freddy can manipulate their memories as well as their dreams, adds a new layer of psychological horror. The film explores the idea that trauma can be buried deep within the subconscious, only to resurface in the most horrific ways. Freddy becomes not just a figure of fear, but a symbol of repressed trauma that refuses to stay hidden. Visually, the 2010 A Nightmare on Elm Street is a darker, grittier film than its predecessor. The dream sequences are less surreal and more nightmarish in a visceral, realistic way. While Craven's original film played with dream logic in imaginative ways, Byers' version opts for a more grounded approach, focusing on the terror of being unable to escape from a waking nightmare. The film's color palette is muted, filled with dark shadows and harsh lighting, giving the whole movie a bleak, oppressive atmosphere. However, while the 2010 remake excels in its psychological exploration and dark tone, it lacks some of the creative spark that made the original so iconic. The dream sequences, while visually impressive, don't have the same surreal, disorienting quality that made the 1984 film so memorable. Freddy's new backstory, while disturbing, also removes some of the mystery that made his character so terrifying. The remake attempts to over-explain the story, resulting in a loss of the otherworldliness that made the original Freddy Krueger so scary. The 1984 and 2010 versions of A Nightmare on Elm Street tackle a primal fear, the terror of sleep, loss of control, and vulnerability when we're at our weakest. Sleep is inevitable, making the possibility of death during this state deeply unsettling. Freddy Krueger personifies this fear in both films. In the original 1984 version, the psychological horror is subtle, using the dream world's strange nature to create discomfort. Dream sequences are filled with odd, broken images that reflect the character's subconscious fears. The film distorts the audience's perception of reality, mixing up what's real and imagined, creating a constant feeling of unease as we wait for Freddy's next move. On the other hand, the 2010 remake uses a more explicit psychological horror method. It adds layers to the story with suppressed memories and trauma, forcing characters to confront their past along with their nightmares. This version suggests that mental wounds can be as deadly as physical threats and that being trapped in one's mind can be dangerous. Freddy's power to twist dreams and memories 
makes him an even more threatening figure. He goes beyond mere killing to become a manipulator of minds. Freddy Krueger isn't your average slasher villain in either film. He torments mentally. He doesn't just kill his victims. He toys with them first, manipulating their fears and insecurities before delivering his final blow. This psychological aspect sets a nightmare on Elm Street apart from other slasher films. It keeps audiences on edge long after they've left the theater. It's clear that the original A Nightmare on Elm Street is a landmark in horror cinema history. It introduced us to a new type of slasher villain who didn't just chase victims, but invaded their minds. Freddy Krueger has since become a horror icon and his influence is seen in many later films and TV shows. The 2010 remake, while not as universally praised as the original, still had an impact. It brought Freddy Krueger back into the spotlight and introduced him to a new generation of horror fans. While it may not have the lasting legacy of its predecessor, the remake's more serious, psychologically focused story added depth to Freddy's character and a nightmare on Elm Street mythology. Both versions of A Nightmare on Elm Street make unique contributions to the horror genre. The 1984 version is an undeniable classic that transformed slasher films and gave us one of cinema's most memorable villains. Despite its shortcomings, the 2010 version provides a darker psychological take on the story, exploring the trauma and fear associated with Freddy Krueger. For horror fans, both films are must-sees, whether you're drawn to the original's uncanny terror or prefer the remake's darker tone. A Nightmare on Elm Street is a story about fear, the terror of sleep, death, and past demons, and as long as Freddy Krueger haunts our dreams, that fear will continue. The original A Nightmare on Elm Street is a slasher supernatural teen horror that is one hour and 31 minutes long and is rated R. The 2010 remake is a slasher supernatural horror crime drama that is one hour and 35 minutes long and is rated R. The Southern Underworld gives both versions four bloody knives. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to the channel. See you next time. Thank you for watching.